Hello and welcome to Cool Your Damn Jets. Um, what I want to talk about today is the latest Nest uh, cameras uh, that Google sells and how I'm not interested in getting them because I got new information that makes me think that they're even worse than the Bell I had. Uh, you may have noticed from other videos that I've installed uh, Hello Nest Hello Doorbell, uh, and it was a previous generation. And at some point, I was looking at my doorbell and thinking about the new generation that Google released, and I was wondering whether I should be with the new generation or stay on the old one. You know, it was more uh, of a you know, it was not a big plan, it was just like a small thought there, like maybe I should have waited to buy my doorbell. Um, but I saw an article today in Android Police, it says Google explain why your Nest Cam and doorbell batteries are acting all wonky this winter. It was written by Tom Lovejoy. And this article tells me that I shouldn't get... A of any of the new devices that are for outside. I do have one of the new generation cameras that is inside and already I'm not very satisfied with that camera. I think they they change the user interface to see, to look at your footage uh, and they change it for the worse. So I'm not very satisfied with that one. But this article gives me even more reason to not want to buy the new devices. And what happens is that uh, oh yeah, before I go into the, the meat of the story, I want to tell you, I did go to the Google's website and I looked for model numbers because I wanted to give you the mo the specific models that had that problem. And I, I, I couldn't find information. At some point, I just decided to give up. And the article that I read doesn't have that information either. I mean, I don't know how Google works without model numbers. They, they hide that information from you. Okay, it should be evident, it should be right at the top, it should be plain and simple. I can give you a comparison. I Last Friday, two days ago, I bought some Ubiquiti equipment to replace my network. I think my network is not functioning right and I'm not satisfied with the devices I have on it. I might produce a video about that at some point. But I went to the Ubiquiti website and I bought devices from them. On the Ubiquiti website, the the models the, the model number of the device you're buying is right there at the top there cannot be any confusion about what you're getting it's there they give you the specs but the model number is right there i know exactly what i'm getting uh, and if you look at other videos on YouTube about people who did an installation and they use this thing and that thing, if they give you their model number, of course they have to give you their model numbers. But if they do give you their model numbers, and I've seen videos where the people were talking about the model numbers of what they installed, if they do give you their model numbers, you know if what you're seeing corresponds with what you have, or if it's a you're seeing a video of an older model, or, you know, you can figure it out. Google doesn't do that. And to me, that's another black mark against Google. That's nonsense. The model number should be patent on the on the website and not hidden. But okay, the meat of the matter here is that those those outside devices apparently in cold weather if they have batteries inside and even while well, those that are wired but that have batteries inside. So you can have batteries in the device, but even if the device is wired, you can have problems with it. Uh, it turns out that in cold weather, the, the batteries don't charge. So in cold weather, your batteries can be useless. I don't know if it can destroy the batteries. I, I, I'm, I'm not rereading the, completely the article as I'm, as I'm speaking to you. I don't know the extent of what happens really to the batteries, but what happens concretely for somebody who has a camera outside is that if they have too many cold days, at some point the device stops working. It just stops. And I know in the article they do say, um, first of all, they say the products are rated for between minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, 104 degrees Celsius. 
I think, uh, quite frankly, I didn't look at the range of rating of my doorbell when I bought it, so it could be the, exactly the same thing. But I'll be frank, this is nonsense. There are parts of the US that can get much colder than that, and, and if they sell the bell in Canada, there are parts of Canada that can get much colder than that. And there may be parts that can get much hotter than that, I don't live there, but I suppose it can get to more than 104 Fahrenheit. So that range, you know, it's not awful, but it is nonsense. You don't want, if you if you install security for your home or you have a, just a camera to know who's at the door, you don't want that thing to start failing when it gets too cold or too hot. You want to have a good range of, of, of operation. And if you cannot meet that the, the ideal range of operation, then don't sell anything. Instead of selling stuff that breaks when it's too cold. So that's nonsense. But the other thing that I, that I noticed is that... Um, they say, here's the good news. Should the batteries completely discharge in your Nest Cam, it will continue to function using hardwired electricity unless the power source is a solar panel accessory as it only charges the battery and doesn't power the camera directly. Unfortunately, the Nest doorbell, the doorbell, so now we're talking about the doorbell. Unfortunately, the Nest doorbell only works from battery power. So the doorbell is powered, the doorbell you know, circuitry is powered from the batteries. The Nest Nobel only works from battery power as the wired power source is exclusively used to charge a battery. So, and they continue as such, in prolonged cold weather, your doorbell could stop working altogether. So, the fact that the doorbell is wired doesn't fix the problem. You could still have the doorbell not working because the way it works is that the power is the doorbell takes the power from the batteries and then the wire that comes in charges the batteries but if the batteries cannot be charged and they're going to be depleted at the other end and then eventually your doorbell is not going to work and then google gave an explanation but that explanation is worthless you know you don't come to to your client and you know oh my thing doesn't work how can we fix this? And then you give an explanation as to why it doesn't work, but you don't fix it. To me, that's nonsense. And to me, that means like, you know, the, the new, de I'm, I'm not looking at the new devices. I, at first I thought I bought the doorbell and I thought, wow, it works so nicely. Maybe I should all change my, my cameras and my setup to Google Nest stuff. And the more I read about it and the more I learn about my own devices, the less I want to do that because of nonsense like this, where the device is going to stop working just because it's cold outside. And we've had enough days here that I, I'm quite certain that we would have run into problems that it w so on some days it would not have, uh, have worked. And I don't, I don't understand Google. Uh, it seems that their their phone, the, as among among all the 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 realm of the of uh, companies or entities sub entities of Google. I don't know how Google is structured actually. Whatever sub entity produces phones, that part of the company seems to be okay. It, they're doing fine. I mean, I'm not saying they're not they're not a misstep here and there, but I've I only buy uh, Google phones pixel phones and they work they work just fine i have no complaints about them i uh, i haven't produced a video about crank your damn just to 11 about the phones because i know in my mind they're too pedestrian and you know everybody has a phone and there's nothing remarkable for me to you know their work they work it's nice they work but all of the other units that produce hardware at google seem to be completely bonkers and I'm talking about anything that I've touched from Google that is a piece of hardware. I'm talking about my Google Minis in my home, my displays, the Google Macs in the basement, anything that is branded Google and is hardware and is not a phone. And I'm talking now about the cameras too. Someone some in, in the production line doesn't have a brain and they produce things that break. And the Google displays, like 
I mean, it's it's difficult because I I don't always have a camera running when I'm interacting with them, but there's been periods of time, and now it seems to have abated a little bit. But there's been periods of time where, you know, every time I was asking something, it was a struggle for it to understand me, for it to access our home automation system and and talk to it. And I would have to repeat the same command two or three times before it understood me, send the command to the home automation system, and something was happening. And, and there would be times where it would say, whoops, there's a problem. And yet, you know, I would tell, tell it to turn on or turn off the lights, and it would say, whoops, there's a problem, but the lights would still turn on or turn off. This is stupid. And, and so the displays are also in, in, in that bag of, of bad products. And right now I have my Nest product, which generally I, I do like, but I've started seeing problems with that one too, where the devices seem to lose network connection randomly. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I could be in the same room with my laptop and get good reception from the router downstairs but the device itself doesn't get the network and it seems random and i know that it's not a safety problem because one unit can talk to another unit so if if one unit among the the whole set is able to talk to the router you should be fine and they also can work independently you know if there's a fire that unit is going to scream but of course all the networked the things that they require cooperation between units is not going to work if it can't talk to another unit. Uh, but usually they can talk with each other, my units. From what I can say, what I can see, they can talk to each other, but there are some units sometimes that cannot access the router, and I do not understand that. So even with the Nest product, which for which I produced a crankier damn just to 11 video, I'm starting to have some reservations about that device. Um, and that's the problem with Google. You buy something, it looks shiny and new and great on the surface, and it, it's, it, you know, two thumbs up. And then you start having an experience with that device, and the experience is subpar. And for me, that has happened with all Google devices except for the phone. And even the phone sometimes has problems. I, would, I should say that. Even the phone sometimes has problems. I've had to reboot my my Pixel 4a a bunch of times, sometimes to clear bugs, and it's annoying. But it's minimal. But, you know, I, we have the displays. We have the Google TV. I, and if you've watched my other videos, I have, I think, two videos on the Google TV and how terrible that device is. I think it's a beta device that should not have been released and should have been refined before Google released it. But Google wants your money, so they're going to release terrible hardware on, on the market to get your money to finance. I don't know what they're financing, uh, but it is nonsense. Um, so yeah, right, right now... I am unable to recommend any of the Nest Cams, even the indoor one. I, I, I don't recommend any of, of the current generation Nest Cams. Um, and unfortunately, I wish Google would put model numbers on their website, but they don't. I think this is stupid. I think Google is a stupid company. Sometimes they're brilliant, sometimes they're stupid. They're the, the, comp the company suffers from uh, situational uh, incompetence. That's how it's called, situational incompetence. And can do some things great. I, I'm happy with my Chromebook, but it's not a, it's not a Google product though. It's it's uh, uh, wait Asus. <laughs> I had to look at the logo on the back. It's an Asus. It's an Asus uh, Chromebook. The operating system works relatively well. I, I've been I have I had some hiccups again with the operating systems, but it works relatively well. But this situational incompetence at Google, where you know, I tried to port my number to Google Voice, my no landline, and they somehow they couldn't do it. And the person who, who with whom I interacted over this 
gave me pad answers and said retry it. And I said, no, I'm not going to retry this thing. I'm not going to retry to port my number. You, you're not giving me the responses and you're not giving me intelligent responses. If I don't feel intelligence at the other end, why should I send my stuff into a black hole? You're not giving me an intelligent response. I'm going to go with those other guys instead. I'm going to pay a little bit every month to have my line line ported to their system. And now it works pretty well because they have eSIMs and I have my line line goes to my phone. So if somebody, we have some people who still have our old line line number, if they call that number, they're going to get to my phone. If it's for my wife, I'm going to arrange to transfer them to my wife somehow. I mean, I may, you know, just take their information and tell my wife that they called and tell them, tell her to change her phone number in their system. Um, but it, this is for me. This is better than 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 Google Voice. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, it's very hard for me right now to say. Even the Google, even the Nest Protect, to say you should buy this this Google product. The Nest Protect has enough of the features that I want that I still think it's a it's a plus, but only just. And if I find that my devices start acting acting wonky before. You know, there's a 10-year limit on on smoke detectors and uh, CO CO detectors. And there's a time limit. It's about it's 10 years. So if I if I find that they start acting wonkily before the 10-year limit, and that there are some serious problems with the network interaction, this is going also going to be a downgrade. I'm I'm going to you know put the big X over my previous video and say don't buy it because it, it looks good at first and then eventually it craps out on you and you're not protected anymore um so yeah I'm, I'm very disappointed in google i don't understand how such a company who could produce hardware that is of good quality decides instead to produce crap and put it out there and, and when I wanted to, to upgrade my network, my inside network, I did not look at Google products at all. At all. I did not look at it. I don't know what they have. Because I don't want to have more Google trouble. I decided to go with Ubiquity, which is generally well rated. I'm not saying that there are no problems with their stuff, but they're generally well rated. And um, I'm looking forward to working with that hardware. Uh, but the Google hardware, no way. Uh, right now, we're not buying more. And and I could have bought more. And I was, you know, I made some changes in the house. And I thought, well, I could do this. I could do that. And I could buy a display and put it there. And we would have this and that. And I decided no. Because Google, in general, except for the phones, and for the product, which are still above board right now for me, the rest is is just asking for trouble. If you want to have trouble in your life, go buy a Google product, except for the phone and NS product. So I'm going to end that rant here. Um, I think Google, again, is a terrible company. And I'll see you in another episode.